My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Welcome to the Leader Assistant Podcast. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's your host, Jeremy Burrows, and it's episode 133. I had to check my notes real quick. Um, It's a lot of episodes. So we are going to hear a clip from my book launch party from, I think it was June of 2020, where I talk about the book cover image, and you'll have to check out the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 133. That's leaderassistant.com slash 133, and I'll actually include the video that includes my slides for this talk, Um, but you can also see the book cover there and see this rope carabiner image that I refer to, and i I got some questions about why the rope image, why the carabiner, why did you choose that image for the front cover of this book for assistance? And so I answered that question in my book launch party and wanted to share the recording with you um, in case you missed it and in case you were curious. Um, I think it's, an, it's a good image to use that has multiple meanings. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this uh quick overview. But then I also talk about, once I get through the rope image conversation, I talk about just an overview of the whole book. And it's uh, it's short. I think it's uh, 10 minutes or so. Um, But I kind of walk through the process of writing the book uh, and and what I included in each section. So I would really encourage you to uh, listen to this overview. And if anything piques your interest, check out the book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Walmart.com or wherever you like to get books or the audiobook, like you heard last week in episode 132, an excerpt from the audiobook. Um, so yeah, check out the show notes for a link to all of those places, leaderassistant.com slash 133. And again, the video of this recording that you're going to hear that includes my slides, um, will be linked in the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 133. All right, enjoy it, and we'll talk to you next time. Why the rope image? So, yeah, I've had a few people ask. Some people are like, this doesn't make sense. you know. So I wanted to kind of just share a few points as to why I chose this image, um, other than the fact that it looks really good on the, on the cover from a design perspective, in my opinion. Uh, so as assistants, we, we manage tension. There's, there's always this constant push and pull. And so I liked the rope because it kind of shows like we are the carabiner that kind of maintains that balance um, in a lot of different ways. And so there's this, this just tension and tug, but there's this steady, strong um, assistant in the middle of the crazy work environments that we, um, that we work in. And then... Um, we also kind of, like I said, with the carabiner, we kind of hold everything together, you know, without us, it kind of just goes wherever um, our executives do whatever they want. The company suffers. Um, and then guide and support. So if you, if you've never been rock climbing, whether at like a, a at a gym or actually out on a real rock with, with rope, rope climbing, um, you've got what's called a lead rope. And so what there's, there's a spotter at the bottom that's holding the rope and they're anchored in and they basically, as you climb higher, they let out a little bit more rope. And then if you fall, they kind of can yank on the, on the, and lock the rope in so that you don't fall um, farther than you would like to fall. Uh, So the other kind of um, tie in with the rope was that we as EAs are like, our executives are up on the wall and they're trying, trying to bring their company to, you know, this, the sales numbers or 
um, they want to sell the company someday. And there's these goal, all these goals that the executives trying to, to meet. And we're like that lead rope spotter at the bottom that is holding on. And, but it's not just holding on to them and supporting them. What do the spotters do um, that are, you know, helping somebody climb? They look ahead and they say, Oh, your right foot, put your right foot there. Oh, put your left arm up about 10 inches above your head. Cause you can't always see unless you're sitting back and you're down there at the lead rope. So I loved that tie in as well. Cause I think that's what assistance we're, we're leading, we're guiding them. We're not just supporting them, um, but we are also s- supporting them. So we're the eyes to our executive um, as they try to reach their goals. And then the last one um, is there was kind of the prologue for those of you who have read the prologue was a story about uh, my my brothers and I and my dad hiking on a glacier, a mountain glacier in uh, Colorado. And um, my brother slipped and fell into a crevasse and disappeared and we thought he was gone. Um, so it was just this, this kind of story that I used that I then tied to my kind of career glacier um, in the book. And anyway, we didn't have the gear. We didn't have the equipment that we needed on that that day and in, in that track. And so this was kind of another time where it's like, okay, this, this is kind of like a climbing rope or a hiking equipment um, tie in where we want to be able to um, support the um, executives, but we also need support. We also need the right equipment. We also, so the other, the other um, guide and support analogy I like is assistant to assistant. So it's not only, we're the lead rope helping our executive up the, up the wall. We're an assistant helping another assistant up the wall or we, ha- or we're trying to reach our career goals. And so that's why I kind of tied that in. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if anybody asks, that's why, that's why I did the rope and I'm excited for the cover. I had a really great designer team um, named Erin Tyler. She was, she was great and um, very excited about that. So just a quick overview of the book. It's called, the subtitle is Four Pillars of a Confident Game-Changing Leader Assistant. And um, the four pillars, I'll just kind of go through the four pillars. Uh, so the first pillar, pillar, I talk about embodying the characteristics. And so what I kind of learned, my, my, the quick version of my story is I've been an executive assistant for 13 years or so. And after about nine years, um, my, my prior executive got fired, burned out. I burned out. I decided to leave that organization and kind of hit reset. And one of the things that I realized was because pe- people used to say, Oh man, you're such a good assistant. And Oh, you're, you're like the rock. You're like the honey badger. You don't care. You just get stuff done. And I was just like, all right, I'm, I'm awesome. You know? And then when I left, I was like, I didn't have any network. I was burned out. So then I started meeting other assistants and I was like, I got a, I got a network. And I started realizing that I was like behind, like I, I, I didn't really know what it meant to be a game changing assistant. I just knew it to me, meant to be like a solid, you know, good assistant. So what I did in this pillar is I kind of, I outlined 18 essential characteristics. Um, it's kind of an overwhelming list, but it's, I was trying to be quick with that list uh, and also realistic because I know that assistants require a lot of different things. But then what I did was I zoomed in on the five game changing characteristics. Um, and those are the ones that I really feel I was missing um, a lot of in my last role. And that um, what kind of makes those leader assistants really stand out from the, um, from the rest of the pack. So these are the five game changing characteristics, discerning, steady, confident, humble, and future-proof. So I kind of uh, walk through each of these in the book and just, I really feel strongly about if these, you know, we, all, we, need, to, we need to embody all the characteristics, but these are the ones that we can really lean into and really um, help us uh, become that game-changing uh, EA that our executive and really the world uh, needs. So the second pillar is employ the tactics. So what I, I didn't want to do is I didn't want to talk about specific tools because the tools always change between jobs. They change every couple of years. There's new tools. 
Um, so my kind of whole philosophy is that the tools you use don't really matter if the tactics you employ are flawed. And so what I tried to do is I tried to walk through all the different things we deal with, time management, calendars, email, travel, communication, um, interruptions, um, goal setting, which Jillian Huffnagel, who I think is on the call, uh, she, she wrote that chapter, which is awesome. Uh, negotiation, um, Al Hussein Madhani helped with that chapter, uh, resume, um, all these different areas. And I just tried to focus on the tactics. Um, and, and then you can take those tactics and apply them to whichever tools you use. So that's kind of the, that's the practical, like hands-on, like, here's how I manage my calendar. Or here's how I manage email. Here's how I manage my executives, um, you know, travel, whatever. So that's, that's the pillar two. Then we get into the fun stuff, uh, the relationships. So engage in relationships is pillar three. And this is where I failed. I did not have a network. I literally only knew one assistant outside of my company. And we only had one other assistant inside my company. So I really didn't have a network of assistants at all. I wasn't on LinkedIn. I wasn't doing anything. And that really, really hurt when this whole thing happened and my boss got fired and I'm just like, what do I do? I just, I just had no support network to lean on. Um, so I talk about the importance of growing your assistant network. Um, and then I also talk about the other relationships, like your, the relationship with your executive. So a lot of you have micromanagers as executives. A lot of you have executives who you've tried to lead, but they're very resistant. Um, so I try to help you, um, share things that have helped me break through those barriers um, with executives who are resistant to change. Uh, and then I talk about coworkers and how we should um, really just, just kind of these, the dehumanization dehuman, of assistance that uh, the experiences that we have where people like coworkers, you think they're wanting to be your friend. You think they want to get close to you. And then you find out that, oh, they just wanted to find out the information from your, your boss, or they just wanted to know how your executive was doing. And these things are really, these are real um, uh, experiences that we deal with all the time as assistants. And so I process through um, how I dealt with that and what I've tried to do. Um, and I really, I honestly just kind of share that I'm still kind of trying to figure out, do I do I, I don't want to be best, best buds with all my coworkers, but I also don't want to be a, you know, jerk in the corner that doesn't talk to anybody. So like, I'm, I'm still wrestling with that dynamic, but just being self-aware of those instances um, of dehumanizing interactions is, is valuable. Then I go to um, the last pillar. So this is kind of the most um, important pillar in a lot of ways, um, because you can be a really good leader assistant practically and, and, produce and on paper you're great but then you'll end up burned out like I was where you're you know quick to anger you're unpleasant to be around you just don't have any you haven't done anything to kind of cultivate your creativity because you just you're just work 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 so I talk about a few things in this pillar um, I first talk about burnout creep and how it just kind of seeps through the wood floors and, you know, you, you may not notice it. And so becoming self-aware and, and then helping you become self-aware about the burnout creep that might be happening in your life. I talk about the signs uh, and stressors. So the stressors are the things that are probably happening or could be happening in your role that could drive you to burnout. And the signs are like, all right, I'm already on the way or I'm already burning out. These are the signs that, that you might be burning out. And then I talk about antidotes. So what helped me kind of come out of that burnout, reset, refresh, get healthier, and what helps me on, you know, on, at an ongoing basis avoid burnout? And really, I'd say avoid, but it's, I'm still trying to train myself to not say avoid because I used to say that all the time, you know, here's how to avoid burnout. Honestly, I don't think that it's possible to avoid burnout. I think that burnout happens to everyone. It's just a matter of 
how serious <laughs> it, it is. And so what I do think we can do is we can fight against burnout and we can resist burnout. Um, and so we can limit the damages of burnout. So that's kind of what I talk about in pillar uh, four. So embody the characteristics, employ the tactics, engage in relationships, exercise self-care. Um, I had a couple people post on LinkedIn saying they, they sat down and read it one sitting. Um, it's, I tried to make it, I had, I hired a really good copy editor to just beat the crap out of it and just like delete this, delete, cut this down. I, was, I would try to make it a really, um, clear, succinct guide, um, for you all. So I hope you enjoyed that overview from over a year ago. Um, I'm still passionate about all those topics and I hope you have been able to check out the book, uh, check out leaderassistant.com slash one, three, three to see the video of that presentation with the slides and the book cover image and all that. Um, and we'll talk to you soon. Please review on Apple Podcasts. Go Bullos.com.